And happy Friday to you, everybody that is tuning in today on this live edition of the Cabin Fever podcast. Happy Friday, especially to all of you who have uh, gone back to work this week. And uh, this uh, actually, uh, your state has come off quarantine. Some of you have gone back to work. And it actually means that Friday means something. Again, we can tell what day it is. Um, it, it is a great place to be um, that you're able to go back and have start putting your life back together. I know that uh, 21 states, I believe, came off curfew this week. Or not curfew, but quarantine this week. And uh, so uh, if that's you and you're one of them, great. Uh, let's continue to pray for the rest of the states that are still uh, under quarantine. I know that uh, even in uh, California and some of the, the bigger states are starting to even turn on some of the jobs so that people can start to go back to work. Uh, we've still got a long road ahead of us here, but uh, man, we are making progress. And so it is the Cabin Fever Podcast. I'm Brent Bailey, your host, and it's a great to have you with us. We're so glad that you joined us on whatever platform that you're watching and or listening to us on, whether that's Apple TV or Roku or uh, Amazon Fire or Facebook or YouTube or <laughs> Twitter or, you know, even all of you folks that are gamers over there on Twitch, uh, man, we love coming and being with you guys. Uh, all of you folks on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, uh, I mean, the, all of you that have been listening and supporting the show, we're so grateful for you and uh, so thankful that you have given us your time today. Uh, why don't you go ahead and do me a favor, if you are on one of the social networks, please click the share button right now and help us get the word out about today's show. We've got a great one planned for you. Uh, and before we get into our first guest today. I don't know if anybody else saw this, but uh, last night uh, I was uh, kind of reading through the USA Today and I saw this was Teacher Appreciation Week. I don't know if anybody else realized that. A lot of uh, folks uh, probably want to appreciate themselves <laughs> because they're, they're doing uh, homeschooling. And uh, uh, I saw that this uh, article was written in a pre for the Teacher Appreciation Week. It, it was the countdown, if you will, uh, a great big, you know, uh, article about the best television show uh, teachers of all time. And so uh, I saw this. I kind of read through it. We're going to get into that for a second. But uh, I do want to say... For all of you who are teachers, man, can I say, we already appreciated you, but you actually have moved up on the ladder, which is really where you, really where you should have been. But all of us who have been homeschooling our kids this week uh, and for the last several weeks, thank you to all the teachers that do this on a regular basis. Uh, man, we're so appreciative of you. Now, the article... Uh, listed some of the best television show teachers of all time. They had people like um, Mr. Cotter. Uh, I think we have a graphic for it. Um, there was uh, people on there that, uh, like Mr. Cotter, and uh, there were folks like uh, Walter White, which I thought that was hilarious. Walter White from Breaking Bad. There's the teacher from Glee. Mark Cooper from Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Uh, Mrs. Keating uh, from How to Get Away with Murder. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a good list. Uh, Mr. Clark from Stranger Things, Mrs. Crabapple from The Simpsons, uh, Mrs. Frizzle from The Magic School Bus, uh, other some other famous teachers. Now there were a few. There was the professor from the Gilligan's Island. I, I, I was just sitting here thinking about uh, who was my favorite teacher growing up, and that's what we want to hear from you about today in the comment section below. Why don't you tell us who your favorite teacher was uh, as you were growing up? I never. I remember Mrs. White was my first grade teacher. She was also uh, my mom's first grade teacher. That so that was kind of unique. But I think probably my favorite teacher growing up was my tenth and eleventh grade current events and then history teacher was Mr. Gilbert and he was really cool he was really he was just real and uh, loved having uh, t his class it was always uh, such a, a great um, conversation uh, during that uh, during those times so uh, that's something I thought I would just start the show off with today a big thank you to all of the teachers that are out there for taking the time to teach our kids and man it really means so much to us especially those of us who don't have the patience <laughs> to teach seventh grade math anymore okay so thank you so much teachers uh, I know that you've been working extra hard even though you haven't been in the classrooms so all right well our first guest today is a a skateboarding legend and how can you say that he's a legend well not only is he in the hall of fame but he also 
um, is uh, one of the founding forefathers of what we know now as the uh, the uh, the movement, if you will. Uh, he was one of the first guys. Tony Hawk has credited him as being the guy that inspired him. Uh, he used, said he used to drive around looking for empty pools to skate in. <laughs> there was this before. This is what it was, and uh, we got some footage on the screen right now of him being inducted into the Skateboarding Hall of Fame. Uh, he is the host of the El Gato Classic in Palm Springs, California. For, in California, I remember in Kentucky. Now, now this is this is you know world of what, away when Kentucky and California in the seventies. Uh, I remember being this little chubby kid uh, going over to my cousin's house, and he was with the first person I ever saw. I was probably seven or eight years old. He had a skateboard. We didn't even know what that was back in those days. And when he got a skateboard and he started getting into uh, skateboarding magazines, and I remember laying in his driveway looking at uh, at the pictures of 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 our first guest and and some of the other guys doing things that we just like thought was like magic like how are they doing that that's got to be i mean do they have wires what are they doing and uh i remember being you know just so impressed by that whole thing uh doing tricks now the great thing about our first guest is his his journey doesn't start and uh or doesn't end with skateboarding he god got a hold of his life he's now a pastor in palm springs california he is a, a great guy he has brought hope to the coachella valley uh through, through jesus and the message that, that he uh, has and so we're so so, so glad to have with us on the program today, Eddie Elguera, the cat, if you will, El Gato. So <laughs> let me see if I can get your volume turned up here. Are you there? Hey. Yes, yes, I'm here. It's great to be on with you. It's so good to have you. Thanks for taking the time out to do it today. How's everything going out there in Palm Springs? Um, it's going. It's going along like everywhere else in the country. I know that uh, we we'll have a little bit difficult time here of opening like it is in New York, uh, but we're pushing on, pushing through, doing what we can to get the gospel out and not go crazy. <laughs> yeah. So now you've been doing uh, video services for a little while now. Well, yeah, this is going to be our ninth week. Can you believe it? Nine weeks. Wow. And so we started off. Um, actually, I was at the increase event in Hawaii. Yes, you were. Flew back. Flew back, went with our team. It was on Friday afternoon, Saturday. Said we got to. We're probably. We prayed about. It, said what are we going to. What are we going to do? We said no. We're not going to have church. Had to put church together online. Let people know. And so what we did is we went online that day, and um, it was live. But then for the next six weeks, we kind of did uh, recording. Uh, but I didn't. It didn't work out for me. I, I couldn't <laughs> handle it. So the last couple of weeks, I've been live real time. And which is the best part I love about it is, is we're watching Facebook and YouTube and people interacting. So at the end of the service, we see people's prayer requests and boom, real time prayers. And so, uh, you know, I, I can't sit down and preach. <laughs> I, yeah. can't, I can't record my message because it's like, I need the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you gotta, go, you, you gotta need that feedback. I know I, 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 I've been doing mine real time because I could not talk to just the camera not knowing there's nobody on the other yeah. side yet. So. I feel you. I feel you. So uh, let's talk a little bit about your story. Now, you you, you started back in the 70s. Uh, and when I heard you speak at uh, one of the increase events, you were you were just talking about you would drive around looking for pools that were empty. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's well, how this started? Was, yeah. Well, actually, I, I saw a magazine in uh, 1975. In the summer of 1975, I walked into this liquor store, Blue Jay, California. It's a small little... <laughs> Big town in the San Bernardino Mountains, small, uh, back then probably population maybe 100. And so I went into the liquor store, I saw this magazine with a guy skateboarding in an empty swimming pool. And the magazine was Skateboarding Magazine dedicated to skateboarding. And I thought to myself, I wanna do that one day. And I never realized that walking into that store that that would change the rest of my life. And it's kind of like, I love the scripture when the Bible says about how David served this generation. I believe that skateboarding is part of me serving God's plan for my life and being a part of the skateboard industry. So yeah, so that got me started and I would, I didn't have uh, no money, didn't have a car, I was uh, 14 years old. I'd hitchhike down from the mountains to San Bernardino, looking around, finding swimming pools to skate in and doing whatever it took to skate pools and just become a better skateboarder and hoping that one day maybe I'd be on the cover of the magazine, maybe hoping that one day um, I could be a professional and get free stuff. Basically, you wanted to get sponsored because when you were sponsored, you get free stuff. And that's pretty much the goal at first. 
I want to get free stuff. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, when you were doing this, did, did you, did you, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe you were thinking this way. Did you think that you were going to start or be the, at the forefront of a real movement that, because it was popular, but, but man, what it became is such a huge thing. Did you, did you even have those kind of thoughts in your, in your mind when you were doing that? No, I, you know, I just, for me, I just, I wanted to be in the magazine. So I thought maybe one day I could be in the magazines. Back then, you know, what skateboarding was mostly in the beach areas. So the coastal areas, Florida, you know, you'd get, uh, you'd get uh, California and Australia, different places like that. And I thought, well, maybe, I hope I could get in the magazine one day. If I could get a picture, man, I have arrived. <laughs> Not thinking where skateboarding would be. And you know what? Skateboarding at that time was really a rebellious sport. It's like if you skateboarded, people look down upon you. It's like, what are you doing? And I would skate throughout the mountain everywhere. And everybody knew me as the skateboard. I'd go wherever I could find a, a, a small patch of, of uh, asphalt or concrete. I would do tricks and 360s. This is before, you know, a lot of the vertical skating. So, yeah, not knowing that what it was going to take me to or what I got to be a part of. I just said, I want to be in the magazine. I want to get free stuff. Basically, that was my, <laughs> my <laughs> desire, my push. Okay, so... Our, 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 our guest today is uh, Pastor Eddie Alguero, El, El, Elguera, and he is uh, also known as El Gato. He is a uh, skateboarding legend, but he's also a pastor. And in the in the face of all these, uh, you know, the popularity and, and the, the movement, God got a hold of your life and really took it for a, <laughs> a big turn. Tell us a little bit about what happened there, because you laid down skateboarding for a while, right? Yeah, it was. Uh, so in 1975, when I saw the magazine cover, I got, OK, one, one day I'll be on the cover. One day, hopefully be in the magazine. Uh, four, uh, five years later, uh, no, four years later, 1979, I was on the cover. I was a skateboarder of the year. I started inventing all kinds of uh, maneuvers. I, I, the Elgario, frontside rock and roll, uh, frontside invert. Fake, yeah. So I started uh, leading out kind of the path of skateboarding and, and invented a lot of the maneuvers that are still done today but uh, it was all new back then after two years you know i was in the a devo video for skateboarding and traveled the world and at the top uh two years in a row i just felt you know is there anything else and you know what have to strive for another contest or i have to win another contest and i got to that place it's just saying you know what i just i don't want to do this anymore i don't know i was just and I just stopped skateboarding. Everybody was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And for three years, like everyone that is doesn't know the Lord, they search for fulfillment, whether it's fame, whether it's money, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol. And and, and so I, skateboarding wasn't fulfilling my life because in all reality, that was not going to fulfill my life. Yeah, God gave me this gift, but it's, it's, it's part of the byproduct of being a believer. But Christian God says, I want you to use your gift. I was using it for the wrong reason. So what happened was, is I, three years trying to find fulfillment, drinking, drugs, smoking, whatever, you, you know, you yeah. know, that, that yeah. party life. And so um, one day this lady came into my brother's restaurant. I'd lost everything. I was working fast food. And uh, here I was at the top. And now I'm working fast food. And uh, a divine appointment, this lady from Huntington Beach, California, love the Lord, just would preach the gospel wherever she was, on the beach of Huntington Beach, wherever, and she was there just by chance in Blue Jay, California, went into, she was just there for the day with her husband, went in, started sharing the Lord with me and talking about the Lord, and then skateboarding came up. I just said, you know, through skateboarding, I I had um, uh, gave my life over to God that day. She says, now God uh, gave you that talent. You're never going to find fulfillment in that. It's through Jesus Christ. Gave my life to the Lord. But what the amazing thing about it was is, you know, a lot of times people will, will lead people to the Lord and just got, okay, now figure it out for yourself. Three weeks later, she came up and she goes, uh, did you guys find a church? We didn't know we needed to go to church. And she says, well, I've been coming up the last couple of weeks and I found this church that you need to go to. I'm going to come up on Sunday. She started, she took us to church. Uh, pastor Jim Cobre, he became my pastor. He was my only pastor for the um until we planted our church, but he still is my pastor. And started going to church. She would come on about Thursday nights from Huntington Beach, discipling me and my family. And it's just like the care that she had. And if I continue to talk about her more, her name is May, you know, I'll start 
I'll start crying because of, <laughs> she impacted my life so much because she, not only did she get me saved, but she discipled me and believed in me. Um, not because I was a skateboarder, didn't want anything out of me because of uh, being a champion, but for who I was as a person. And so uh, you turn your life over to God. You you, you start down the trail to the um, the trail to ministry. You start uh, down ministry. And you start a church, uh, and then you start the El, El Gato Classic. And um, I think we have some footage of that that's up on the screen right now, um, where uh, so many of the legends really came to this thing, and it became kind of a. Uh, a big deal. I mean, there's Tony Hawk on the screen right there. Uh, so many people came to it. Now, I know you, you said that you're taking a break right now, but you're working on revamping this thing a little bit. Uh, but that had to just mean a whole lot to have God just bring that right back into you and kind of come, come full, full circle. Yeah, well, actually, so I got saved in 1983. So three years after um, I stopped skateboarding, 86, God began to speak to me to get back in the industry. Got back in the industry. At first, I was kind of like, ah. I'm not going to be the best anymore. And God says, this isn't about you. I'm going to use you as an ambassador for me in the, in the sport of skateboarding. There wasn't, uh, like today you see skate churches, um, uh, skate ministries, but back then it was all new. I was basically one of the first Christian skateboarders. So I got back in the industry, worked my way back into the industry. Um, as, uh, as I was in there till about 1983, so 86 to 93, uh, and then God began to speak me, become a youth pastor. And I skated this whole time up until then. So youth pastor for 14 years, now find this church where we're at now, uh, here in the desert, see Three Palm Springs, and, and been here for the last going on 14 years as well. And so through that time, I've, I've kind of been in and out of the industry. When I first started the church, I wasn't in it that much. But uh, five, six years ago is when I started the Elgato Classic. And it was more to honor the, the legends of the past because they don't get the recognition. Today you got corporate sponsors, the social media, but those that laid the, laid the foundation back then uh, never really got the recognition or money. So I wanted to honor the past and champion the future. So that's why, you know, I said, hey, I want you were a pivotal point in the skateboard. People may not know it, but I want people to know that you are a pivotal point in the history of skateboarding. So that's kind of what I did, and they just love gathering together. It's just, it was it was powerful, and like I said, I'm revamping it. We're gonna there's a new park that's gonna be opening in La Quinta. Well, now it's 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 on hold, but right, um, I believe right. once they open that, we're gonna do that, and uh, and then uh, just you know, it's just it's amazing. It's kind of it's it's more than a high school reunion. We're family. I mean, we've been in the sport together, competing and part of this history of skateboarding for over 40 years. And so it's kind of that camaraderie. Yeah. Pastor Eddie Elgera from uh, C3 Palm Springs. Uh, you can catch up with him on uh, social media uh, at, uh, let me get it up there, eddieelgera.com, also c3ps.com, and then at Eddie Elgera on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, Pastor, thank you so much for coming and being with oh, me today. Uh, thank this was you. I, I, I could sit and listen to you tell stories for for hours, <laughs> and uh, yeah. we want to have you back uh, maybe one day. When, and when we can, when we have more time, we can we can let you yeah. just just <laughs> tell stories Unleash. about you know with all the people that you've you've uh, had had uh, the experiences with. Thank you again so much for coming on hey, today. Thank you, and uh, you know, stay strong out there. We'll be praying for you, and uh, we're believing right. for for California to open back up pretty soon. All right. All right, thank, thank you very much. All right, that's Pastor Ed, Pastor Eddie Algara of uh, the uh, well, I don't know why the screen fucked up there. There we go. Uh, of Palm uh, Springs and uh, California, you can reach out to him um, uh, via the uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, I see if I can. <laughs> I think I just lost my second guest. Uh, let me see if I can go back to him. Yeah, this is one of the great things about using new technology that you're not familiar with. So, <laughs> we've tried to start using Zoom, and um, it's uh, it's a it's a new platform for me. So I'm trying to figure that out. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm not very good at Zoom, so I probably should have uh, gotten more prepared for this beforehand. But uh, our next guest is going to be a. Um, uh, a news anchor from South Carolina, somebody I've known for his whole, almost a, his whole life. I remember being a youth pastor in California. I mean, excuse me, not California, in Oklahoma. And um, 
Yeah, you're going to have to just forgive me, folks. I'm just trying to <laughs> to uh, get this going here. Uh, when I was a youth pastor in Oklahoma, we used to do a youth conference every year, and his family would bring him out. Uh, also, at the increase events, um, I would uh, see this young man. He was so young. He was so quiet. And um, um, he was just... Uh, Somebody that didn't really say a whole lot, but he was just a—he was a great, uh, a great young man. And uh, so when when he went to <laughs> when he went to go and be uh, what he became, it really kind of uh, was uh, startling to us. We we couldn't believe that this fellow was uh, was doing what he's doing. I am so sorry. Let's see if we can get him back in here. All right. I think we've got it going on now. Uh, anyway, he, he became uh, what he became, and now he is a anchor for for WYFF in uh, Greenville, South Carolina. Sorry about that, Joe. We had a little technical mishap there. And so now I'm going to try and get him up on the screen here. Hold on one second. Let's see. That's one of the great things about doing things live on a platform that you're not really familiar with. Here he is, Joe Ripley from uh, uh, WYFF Channel 4, NBC affiliate in uh, Greenville, South Carolina, right? That's right, Brent. Thanks for having me on, first off. <laughs> Sorry about doing? that, man. I, 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 this is the only second time I've ever used Zoom, so it's a, it's a real mess. <laughs> <laughs> so. no, no worries. I, I got to say, uh, first, thanks for having me on. Uh, you've been tremendous to me and my family over the years. I appreciate that. I appreciate what you're doing with the podcast here, Cabin Fever Podcast, aptly named. And how about El Gato, right? Yeah, he's he awesome, awesome, isn't he? Yeah, he's just such a, I mean, I, I could sit and listen to him tell stories for hours because uh, I grew up reading those magazines that he was in. And so I just, it's just, uh, you know, it's kind of like meeting one of your idols. But uh, anyway, listen, I was telling everybody, I remember, you know, I remember you growing up. So when you were kind of quiet, didn't say a whole lot. And then when I found out that you went on to become a TV personality I, I mean I, I'm not it's not because you're you know uh, your your looks or anything because you're obviously drop dead handsome man right there but uh, but uh, <laughs> thank but, you but you just you were just always so quiet and now you're you're one of the faces of the NBC News affiliate there in uh, in South Carolina and man I just I just have to know wh at what point did you start getting the itch to be on TV yeah, well, Brent, I've always been interested in, in people and sharing their stories, and I've always been that creative type to kind of bring that together. So I got the, the itch first, probably back in college. I would, you know, grow up looking at sports and uh, get interested in the broadcasters rather than, <clears throat> you know, get tied up in the teams. I'd, I'd love to know the players' stories. How did they get to where they were? And the coaches themselves, how do they manage teams? Uh, and then it, it just grew into... Uh, from an interest to uh, discovering this gift I had for for sharing stories, to talking to people, connecting with people, and bringing out the emotional, bringing out the um, the, the most um, the most emotional part of their lives, and sharing that with people. Because at the end of the day, Brett, it, it's not about what makes us different, but what all do we have in common? And I've found that throughout the five years I've been working in broadcast news. So. Our, our guest is Joe Ripley, anchor person for WYFF4 in Greenville, South Carolina. Now, it's it's not like this is a non-competitive industry. This is one of the <laughs> hardest things to break into. Uh, how? I mean, what's the key to fulfilling a dream like that in an industry that is so overly competitive? You know, there's this myth, and maybe it, there's more truth than fiction to it, that this industry is cutthroat. And... You know, in some respects, it is. Breaking into this business is hard. Um, you used to have, you know, programs all over the country, um, you know, designed to filter journalists into the field. But I was blessed and fortunate enough to go to the University of Georgia. I had to get that shout out in there. Go dogs. Um, the Grady I'm sorry. Uh, I'm School sorry. of Journalism. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. They, they helped mold me into who I am today. Uh, and they have a, a knack for, they have a great track record for, um, for landing journalists and jobs all around the world. You look at uh, Ryan Seacrest, Deborah Norville, uh, some of the folks I look up to um, that have made great strides in broadcast and entertainment side and the news side. 
Um, but breaking in was a little harder than I thought. So I thought, you know, that UGA would tell me what to do and you know, put me right where I needed to be. Not so much. I got a call during finals week, my senior year in college, uh, after I applied to hundreds of jobs mm-hmm. in radio and TV uh, and, and elsewhere. And it was, you know, uh, my news director, my former boss in Columbus, Georgia. That was my first uh, professional stop here on the road. Uh, and so he said, hey, you know, we, we've heard great things about you. You know, UGA turns out great journalists. We'd love to have you on board. I said, great. What do you want me to do? He said, well, we want you to man the web desk. And I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> and he <laughs> says, you know, we want you to you know, handle our social media. We want you to put together our new website and transition us from this kind of antiquated dinosaur uh, of a new station to bringing us into the digital world. This is about 2015, so five years ago. And I said, you know what? I want to be on air, but I know I got to do what I got to do to get where I want to be, right? Yeah. So I said, let me get my foot in the door. And that's exactly what happened, Brett. Uh, three months later, they asked me to anchor on the desk. First time, no experience. I said, sure. Uh, <laughs> I was deathly afraid. I remember... <laughs> Staring at the screen, I was wondering, is anybody listening right now or is everybody listening right now? And so I didn't know what was coming out of my mouth. My mind was numb, but boy was it exhilarating. And so and, it, it, and so when you're when you're when you're starting like that and you 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 drop some truth there for everybody because a lot of people ex- would expect to start where you where you ended up. Uh, exactly. that a lot of folks don't like to walk through the process. Um, but the fact that you went and remained faithful doing something that, you know, probably compared to where you are now seemed like such a, an easy thing to do, but the key is faithfulness, isn't it? It really is Brent. And it is that process that you think of. A lot of us want the results. Now, a lot of us want, you know, uh, to be successful. Now be successful where you are. Success doesn't always mean the title success doesn't always mean, you know, the, the bank account success doesn't always mean, prominence success is doing uh best what you are doing now where you are now and if you are faithful then if you're faithful a little you'll be faithful with more god will give you more to handle if he knows you can handle the little stuff and, it, and i find myself you know recounting a lot of those times where i had to do seemingly menial tasks then that still serve me today and so uh, don't don't ever forget you know where you are now. Never despise the day of small beginnings, because those steps will lead you eventually to where you will go. Our guest is Joe Ripley. He's a pastor's kid. He's now a news anchor uh, and and just somebody we're super proud of and super ex- excited to have on the program. Um, listen. There's a lot of talk, and you know we don't want to go too deep into this here, but there's a lot of talk right now about the media being untrustworthy and and uh, you know conspiracy theorists everywhere and stuff like that. Do you confront that yourself personally on a, on a daily basis? <laughs> on a daily basis, no. Uh, absolutely, I understand the business I'm in, the industry yeah. I'm in gets a lot of criticism, it's a lot of flack, but it also gets a lot of praise, Brent, because yeah, we are truth seekers. We um, we hear so many voices and it's hard to distinguish what's right and what isn't. And so the media, if you want to label us that, it's you know comprised of different components, right? So uh, me being in local news, this is probably the, the closest you will get to uh, relevant journalism, journalism that knocks on your front door and tells you what's happening outside in your communities, in your neighborhoods, and we are tracking down those stories, the stories you hear on the you know, federal level, the political levels, we're breaking those down into what affects you. And so I, I've gotten it before. I've gotten the you know, yelling in your face, beating on your window in the car, wondering, you know, what do they have in their hands? You know, what yeah. are they gonna do? Yeah. That, that fearfulness, but at the same time, I know who's with me, right? I got Come angels on guarding me. That's right. Uh, I got I got Jesus living in my heart. I know that you know He will never leave me nor forsake me. So everywhere I go, I go out with the expectation that I've got a job to do, and God is going to guard me in doing that job. 
So good. Uh, one of the things I did see you, uh, one of the posts that I think you put up that you were on with uh, Al Roker one day. That's got to be pretty exciting <laughs> to have a, a, a shot from the national desk. <laughs> Absolutely. I have been incredibly blessed to interview President Trump. I've been incredibly blessed to hold forums for um, political candidates and to get uh, get kind of right up in their faces there. And it's an incredibly cool experience, Brent. Um, got to be on um, the Today Show. <laughs> yeah. And of course, we had Al Roker on our program and they are just sincere folks. I mean, you kind of get an idea for what they uh, might seem like on air, but actually talking to them um, they're real folks just like you and I. I uh, talked to Kevin Frazier the other day uh, from Entertainment Tonight, and he was just incredibly real. You know, he, he was trying to find a way to navigate this whole coronavirus mm -hmm. pandemic and dealing with his kids and working from home. And it's just a reminder that, you know, at the same basic level, we're all human, right? Um, but absolutely, right? that's one of the perks of the job. You get to talk to, uh, to important folks here. That's so cool. Uh, this is Joe Ripley, WYFF4, uh, NBC News affiliate uh, out of South Carolina with us today. Man, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Sorry for the little mess up with, with Zoom there, no but it was so great to have you. We're super proud of you and super excited for the future. Uh, you know, um, I, I, I know the answer to this, you know, but I got to ask it anyway. What's, what's, the, what's the big, the, you know, the end game stop for you? Are you wanting to be on the, on the national desk? Oh boy, yeah, Brent. You know, it's funny where life takes you, and it's funny how you plan things, and then God changes your plans. But you know, where I see myself, I see myself, you know, with my many interests being used. You know, Elgato, Pastor Eddie, was talking about God using his gifts, yeah, um, and you know, and fulfilling that potential. And I see myself on that that national stage, on that global stage. Um, talking to folks, connecting to folks on whatever level they are on right now. So whether that is through news uh, or through music, which I still continue to uh, pursue as well, still uh, playing around, creating some some good stuff there. So uh, keep tuned, uh, stay tuned. But I see myself uh, very much using all of those gifts and talents that God gave me, uh, giving back to the community who, who desperately needs them right now. Um, Brent, if you've got a little time, I just wanted to, I do, to leave I do. you with a couple points here. Come on. Um, I know with the, the coronavirus uh, running rampant, a lot of people are, are looking to folks like you uh, for some positivity and very much thankful for that. But I wanted to, to break down PPE. That's a, a, a term that we've heard, heard a lot these days, personal protective equipment, but kind of broke that down. Um, and I want to give you these points. Uh, the first P is protection right now guys i know as i mentioned before you're hearing a lot of voices right now but you want to protect what's what's coming in what you're digesting right now um physically emotionally spiritually all of that because it does have an impact on you brent we are seeing cases of depression spike we're seeing suicide cases um spike and we've got to know that no weapon formed against us will prosper so good you know it, it we've got to make sure that we are eating, digesting the right things so that we are sustained during this period of crisis. Uh, focus on the positive. You know, at work, we've um, put a focus. WYFF for Good is our initiative to put a spotlight on more uh, positive stories in our community rather than just talking about the negative. So, um, you know, we held a food drive the other week where we raised more than a million meals for local food banks wow. and folks in need, which was just incredible. Uh, all of us played a part in that and incredibly thankful that I work for a company and a station who has their mind and eye focused on community needs. Um, you know, the other P, we talked about protection. Talk about perspective, Brett, and that perspective is going to give you the direction um, to handle what's going on right now. Do we think of crisis? Do we think of the problem? Or do we think of the challenge? Do we think of the benefits? Do we think of the silver linings in a pandemic? Um, we got to have that expectation that something good will come out of this. You know, I've seen more than ever now people um, not worried, but people grateful for the time they get to spend with family, that the time that they were spending at work is now at home yeah. where they do get to, you know, um, 
think about what is most important to them. Um, and you got to keep that perspective too, because while others are, you know, going through the pandemic, other people are, are dealing with things entirely different. I mean, we had some major storms blow through. You know all about storms and how they, they do in the Midwest and in Florida, there were the hurricanes, but we just had a nasty run there of you know, three straight weeks of severe weather. Folks lost their houses. Folks, um, some folks lost their lives, Brett, and it's incredibly painful yeah. um, to think about that. But uh, in that same manner, we've seen folks step up. I saw, I did a story last week about a team of veterans, Marine veterans who stepped up went to the middle of nowhere to help people they didn't even know rebuild after their communities were destroyed. Uh, interviewed this week uh, a girl, Steffi Kong, who uh, is an incredible student athlete at a local college here. She's trying to make it home to Singapore to see, to see her parents because she's about to graduate this year. Uh, there are so many stories of people pressing through and people um, stepping up to do good right now despite what's going on. Uh, P perspective. So we got P protection, P perspective. And the last one E is empathy. Uh, I think a lot of us feel for what's going on right now, feeling for others going through this crisis, thinking about people losing their jobs, people losing family members, people um, losing businesses, other struggles. But you know what? You're not alone. <laughs> you know, so uh, Jesus was tempted. He was tried like all of us. He knows what we're going through. Um, and we were charged by Apostle Paul to, to rejoice when others rejoice and mourn when others mourn. I think if a lot of us show that empathy, then we'll be a lot better off. I did a story, Brett, the other week about um, this couple who was uh, you know, intent on celebrating their wedding the day before Easter because of the significance of that weekend to them and their faith. And they were limited by the restrictions. But you know what? Some folks in, in North Carolina stepped up for them. They said, let's see what we have in our storehouse. Let's see what we, what resources we have, what people we know to make this the, the most special day ever that you guys were intent on having. And that was just incredible to see, um, to see people stepping up again it right? is. because they felt for them. Yeah. They felt that, uh, they felt that need to give what was inside of them to help them um, to get through this, this process, this time. Um, and so instead of crisis, uh, in time of crisis, think of PPE, right? Protection, perspective, and empathy. I think we'll be a lot better off because of it. Man, that's so good. That's, I mean, that empathy is, you know, what the Bible says is Jesus was touched by the feelings of our infirmities. And I guess if he's our example, that's what we should be doing. Our guest has been Joe Ripley of WYFF4 in uh, South Car Greenville, South Carolina. Joe, so grateful to have you and so thankful for you and your family. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again. It was great to see you in Hawaii. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see you real soon and not just, uh, you know, via Zoom, but in person. Absolutely. Hawaii sounds real nice right Doesn't now, it? Fred. It's, oh, it's overcast here, a little chilly. Yeah, so it is here too. Nice so. warm beaches. I have to turn on those sound effects. <laughs> so <laughs> Put me there to take me there. But uh, again, thank you, Brent, for having me on. I appreciate it. A quick shout out to all the mothers, too. Uh, Mother's Day weekend is coming up. Here is your reminder. Yeah, uh, yeah. So don't forget. <laughs> Head out to the open Walmarts right now and get your mom something. So <laughs> anyway, take care. Uh, give your love. Give our love to your family. And uh, we appreciate you. Super proud of you. Good job. And uh, we look forward to hearing more great things from you. Absolutely. God bless you, Brian. Bless you, take Joe. Care. All right, take care. That's Joey Ripley, uh, who's now. Uh, that's. I'm sorry. That's what I call him. But that's what. Uh, that's he's known by Joe now uh, on uh, uh, WYFF4 of uh, Greenville, South Carolina. So uh, great job. Uh, we're going to uh, wrap up today's show. Um, I know that we had some technical problems today, but you know it is what it is. Um, it's, it's a new format we're trying to use. As you can tell, Zoom has a few more features than what we've been using before, and uh, it's a uh, you know when you have no crew <laughs> you're going to make mistakes but that brings us to what we want to talk about as we wrap up the show today i want to say thank you to all of you who have jumped in to start supporting us i just have been totally humbled by this uh this entire process uh, when we called bob harrison on the first day to ask him to be on and he was so yes let's do it um it was really humbling and for, for all of you who have called and text and supported and started following us on on all the uh, social media platforms and things like that uh, and have, have been so great to uh, share the podcasts 
it's been it's been great and so we're so and just so great full for you. Uh, I do want to remind you that if you didn't catch my wife's podcast yesterday, she did a special edition of the Cabin Fever podcast with her mother, her sister, and their good friend. Uh, So it was uh, Sharon, Jenny, and Christine Martin, and Jody. uh, And they really celebrated moms. Now, this is always, it is uh, archived on our YouTube channel, and you can watch it again. I would encourage you to watch it, especially if you're a mom or if you want to play it for your mom. It is a great, great piece of ministry for moms and women's. And so I wanted to uh, thank Jody for doing that yesterday. And that brings me to a big announcement. Jody is going to become a regular here on the podcast. She's going to start her own version of this on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now you say, when is that going to happen? We're still trying to make the adjustments for that. But Jody is going to be starting her own version of the Cabin Fever podcast or whatever we end up changing the name to. Um, She's going to start taking it uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, so you won't want to miss that. She's going to have powerful ladies and powerful guests on her own uh, as she uh, will be bringing you uh, her version on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now, that means that the podcast is going to be going to five days a week. We're going to become a daily show, and it's going to be live. We'll keep you posted as to when her first non-special um, is going to air um, but we're so excited to be able to do this and to bring this with you um, we thank uh, all of those of you who have reached out and have been started to support the podcast financially you know i know i sound like pbs when i do that but this podcast is made possible from viewers like you and if you'd like to get involved and to do this uh, to help us with the podcast so that we could hire some uh, production staff so that yours truly doesn't have to sit here and push all the buttons but we could hire somebody to get it done that is where we want to go next we want to be able to upgrade uh, to hire somebody to be able to do the production side of this you can text a gift to 84321 search for direction church where you're in they say what is that what is direction church direction church is the um, is the church that I passed and uh, we are uh, t- totally tax uh, um, exempt. So when you give your gift, it is a, a tax exempt gift for that. Uh, and uh, we'll give you the donation letter at the end of the year. So it is a benefit to you as well as the information that we bring on the podcast. Okay. So uh, we want to thank you for that in advance as we go to advance this to become excuse me a real show i'm not getting choked up i promise (laughs) okay now this monday we're going to be taking the day off because we have a travel day jody and i have been um up in um up in kentucky at my parents house uh during the quarantine we came up here for spring break everything kind of went south so uh we've been up here for now seven weeks and so we're going back this weekend to start church services back up for direction church uh, so Monday is going to be a travel day because we got to come back up here to get our kids and start packing up our stuff here. So Monday, we won't be on this Monday. However, Wednesday, our next scheduled podcast, I got a very special guest that day. I've got Daryl Strawberry from the Mets uh, Hall of Fame organization, New York Mets, uh, Major League Baseball superstar, and his wife, Tracy. They are uh, uh, just outstanding ministers. Uh, of course, if you're familiar with Daryl, you'll know that uh, he is a Uh, absolute legend in the baseball world and so we're going to look forward to having them with us then according uh then looking ahead into the following week uh i've also got former nwa heavyweight champion nikita koloff and we're working on scheduling grammy winner jason crab so we've got great guests in the pipeline for you so go ahead and keep uh, sharing the podcast and it's going to be another great day head outside if you can and break The Cabin Fever. Have a great day, everybody.